Okay, we're talking about the cell, the health of the cell, the health of the body, and the health of the cell. Last couple episodes, we've been specifically talking about cell waste, cell death, the buildup of the remnants of dead cells, and the buildup of the remnants of, of cell waste, specifically something called lipofusion. No matter what our health issues are, whether you got cysts on your ovary or whether you got zits on your skin or whether you got arthritis or cancer or heart disease, whatever your health issue is, in order to correct them, we have to correct the health of the tiny little cell. There's no way to, to correct the health of an organ or a tissue if you're not working at the cell level. This is so important, you guys, because the medical model wants us diverted. It wants to place our attention on the organs and on the structures. And without addressing the cell, there's nothing we can do except poison things and shut things down. This is the problem, in large part, this is the problem with medicine. It focuses on the heart or the, or, or the various glands or the various structures in the body, but it doesn't focus at the level of a tiny, tiny little cell. Specifically, when we talk about the health of the cell, we have to address the health of the membrane, that coating on the surface of the cell, the membrane. This is the intelligence of a cell, the processor of a cell. Dr. Bruce Lipton in his book, Biology of Belief, talks about this extensively, and it's so important to understand. The coating of a cell is a liquid crystal information processor. It's a computer chip. It's largely composed of fats. And that means if all disease is cell disease, and all cell disease is at least partially cell membrane disease, we got to make sure we're doing what we need to do to get fats into our body and to improve the way the body processes fats. The health of the body is dependent on the health of the cell. The health of the cell is dependent on the outer coating of a cell, the cell membrane. And the health of the cell membrane is largely dependent on fat. Fat, fat, fat. If we're sick, we may only care about getting better. If we've got a health problem, we just may care. All we care about is getting rid of our pimples or arthritis or, or heart disease or whatever. But if we don't understand why our sickness is showing up, we're not going to be able to truly get better. If we're overweight or have diabetes or digestive health issues or brain health issues or autoimmune disease or our body is breaking down in any way, we will not be able to reverse the degenerative process, the breakdown process. We're not going to be able to reverse that process effectively if we don't understand what's happening. And I know that the bright side can be called the too much information side. I understand that I'm giving you all kinds of detailed information. And some of you may say, I don't want that information. I just want the medicine. I just want the, the nutrition to get me better. And I've had radio people tell me that. And they may be accurate, but I don't care. I'd rather give you guys too much information because my mission here, the bright side mission, is to have us all understand how our body works so that we can fix ourselves without having to be dependent on a medical model that is way more concerned with economics and financial gain than it is about the health of the individual. This is a message of independence. If we don't understand what's happening inside, a bo inside our bodies, inside our cells, how disease is showing up, we become dependent. This is a message about independence. It's about freedom from the medical model. It's about liberty from the medical model. It's about not needing Obamacare. It's about not needing to go check with your doctor. Make sure you check with your doctor. Doctor's orders, you know. This is about not doctor's orders. This is about freedom from doctor's orders. And if it's too much information, I'd rather err on the side of too much information than not enough information. All disease is cell disease, and cell disease is in large part cell membrane breakdown, and the cell membrane can be thought of as a tiny little sliver of fat. Tiny, 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 like 10,000 times thinner than a piece of paper. That's tiny, folks. And that means that ultimately fixing the cell and fixing the cell membrane is going to be dependent on fat and our ability to process those fats through the stomach and the digestive tube, the digestive tract that runs from your mouth to the other end. 
That means stomach acid. That means pancreatic juices. That means a healthy gallbladder. That means having your gallbladder. That means a healthy liver. And that means a healthy small intestine as well. Fats, fats, fats. Essential fatty acids, super important for the cell membrane. The cell membrane is made up largely of essential fatty acids. They are essential. That means they are a must-have. That means diet and supplementation. That means making sure you're getting your essential fatty acids through foods, healthy grains, good sources of omega-6, fish, good source of omega fats, seeds, good source of omega fats, and supplementing with your ultimate essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids via this membrane connection are important for everything. Every single health issue you can name. Hang tight. I'll tell you what I mean when we come back from our break. I am Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 855-660-4261 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. We do have a couple lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in our next segment. I want to welcome aboard our new listeners from Arkansas. I was doing, I did a couple talks, actually I did, I did uh, three talks in Arkansas this weekend for Pete Greenway. Thank you for putting that together, Pete. And if you're a new listener from, uh, and you're uh, listening to The Bright Side, you were at the, our talk in Arkansas. Welcome, and great to have you with you. It was a fun time, and uh, we did a lot of good work in Arkansas, Hot Springs, Arkansas. We'll be back out there with Dr. Wallach on May 9th, so if you missed it, come by uh, May 9th. We'll do, uh, Dr. Wallach and, and Pete are going to be doing a big event. I think it's uh, three or four days. But anyway, call Pete Greenway, 501-538-3160. He can give you a scoop. Thank you, Pete. I know you're listening out there. All right, so let's see. We're talking fats, good fats, essential fatty acids specifically for pretty much any health issue. I don't care if you're dealing with migraine, headaches, or acne, or heart disease. Think essential fatty acids. These things are so, so important for every single health issue you can name. Why? Because the cell membrane, which coats the cell, all disease is cell disease, and that coating on top of the cell is going to regulate what happens inside a cell. Those, that coating is largely made up of essential fatty acids. All disease is cell disease. All health is cell health. And the cell membrane is the major determinant of cell health. Essential fatty acids, in turn, are the major determinant in the health of the cell membrane. Vitamin E, by the way, acts as a guardian or a protector for the cell membrane, and that means vitamin E, like essential fatty acids, is also going to be important for all cell health, for all health issues and all cell health issues. Cell health is cell membrane health, and cell membrane health depends on vitamin E. You're not going to find vitamin E in a lot of foods, and that's why it's so important to supplement with vitamin E. 400 international units a day is a good place to be with vitamin E. You can skip a day with vitamin E here and there because it is stored in the liver, but you want to make sure that you're getting 400 international units a day most days. You're not going to find it in foods. So if you're uh, one of those anti-supplement persons, well, anti-supplement folks, probably not listening to this program, but if you are and you don't like supplements, you don't like supplementation, you're going to find yourself deficient in this really important cell membrane protecting vitamin, vitamin E. The cell membrane also contains lots of cholesterol. That means eat your cholesterol. Eat your cholesterol. How do you like that for a contrarian health advice? Eat cholesterol. Now, you've got to make sure you're eating cholesterol that hasn't been cooked because cooking cholesterol or heating cholesterol can damage the cholesterol molecule. But eating cholesterol that's not heavily processed, liver, organ meats, eggs, all these are good ways to get cholesterol in your system. And by the way, the more cholesterol you eat, the less cholesterol your body's going to make. Eating cholesterol is the best way to control the manufacturing cholesterol. An egg is like a natural statin drug, a non-toxic natural statin drug in the sense that it'll help lower the body's production of cholesterol, unlike a statin drug which will poison the cholesterol manufacturing machinery. Eating cholesterol, like you get in eggs, will actually naturally lower the amount of cholesterol that your body makes. How do you like that? Eat cholesterol, lower cholesterol. The more cholesterol you eat, the less cholesterol your body will be making. Eating cholesterol is also going to be important for the health of a cell via this cell membrane effect. This understanding of the importance of cholesterol and this understanding of eating cholesterol to, in order to keep your cells healthy just destroys it. It, it demolishes the com common conventional Dr. Oz, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, particle size, conventional wisdom. I hate to, sorry to pick on Dr. Oz. I just use him as a poster boy or as an icon for the conventional medical nonsense that passes his wisdom. 
In any case, this understanding of the importance of cholesterol destroys the conventional wisdom that perceives cholesterol as some kind of dangerous biochemical whose, whose levels have to be pharmacologically suppressed. Lecithin is another very important component of the cell membrane. Your body can make lecithin. You're going to get some uh, lecithin if you eat your eggs. Supplementing with your diet, uh, supplementing your diet with some lecithin is also a very good idea. Get some lecithin granules. We've talked about how important lecithin is for improving fat absorption, but lecithin is also important for the health of that cell membrane. Lecithin granules can support fat metabolism. Lecithin granules are a wonderful fat digestion aid, but lecithin granules are also also very important for keeping cells healthy. That makes lecithin a pretty darn important supplement and that means eating lecithin in the form of eggs or once again in organ meats can also be very important for keeping your cells healthy. If your ability to process fats is going to be compromised, the health of the cells, the health of cell membranes and ultimately the health of the body is going to be compromised as well. And that means in addition to lecithin, which is important for the absorption of fats. If you've had your gallbladder removed, if you have any liver health issues and, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is almost an epidemic. 30 to 40 percent of Americans are dealing with it. If you have a liver health issue, issue, if you have an intestinal health issue, if you have any fat malabsorption problems, use your ultimate enzymes with all your meals. Get on the nightly essence, the probiotics. That's also important for fat metabolism and fat absorption. Use apple cider vinegar after all of your meals. That can help improve fat absorption. Take a little extra bile salts. Take a little extra pancreat and you can go get those in health food stores. Make sure you're using methionine, the amino acid methionine from organ meats and meats in general. Make sure you're using choline. Make sure you're using inositol. All of these are available in health food stores. They can all help improve fat absorption and ultimately all health issues, including heart disease, skin health issues. And by the way, dry skin should always, 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 first and foremost, be considered as diagnostic of a fat problem, fat processing, fat digestion, or fat intake problem. And you'll find that once you start supplementing with essential fatty acids, the ultimate EFAs, one of the things you're going to find is that your skin is nice. Your skin is not as dry without any moisturizer. Nobody really needs a moisturizer. In fact, moisturizers are pretty darn counterproductive. Moisturizers just hide the fact that your skin is not soft and moist. Moisturizers suppress your natural moisture factors and moisturizers disguise fat deficiencies, deficiencies in either the intake or the absorption of fats and essential fatty acids. Fats are also super important for brain health and nerve health. If you're dealing with dementia, you're dealing with Alzheimer's disease, you're dealing with any kind of movement disorders, Parkinson's disease, Bell's palsy, whatever, uh, multiple sclerosis, amyotropic lateral sclerosis, essential fatty acids, lecithin fat absorption aids can be your best friend. Last week we talked a lot about the damage, the uh, a damage, uh, uh, the signs of cell damage. These particles that can accumulate, sticky deposits. We call them lipofusion, L-I-P-O-F-U-S-C-I-N. You don't hear a lot about lipofusion, but it's super important. You'll see it as brown spots on the skin. They call them age spots or liver spots. I'm not talking about hyper pigmentation or pigment, I'm talking about, uh, uh, they call it aging pigment, but it's really can be thought of as cell waste or cell soot. Lipofusion represents a breakdown, not just in cell health, but also a deficiency in fatty nutrients and fat absorption. There's a really interesting relationship between good fats, fat absorption, digestive health, and the accumulation of lipofusion. We'll tell you all about that on our next Bright Side episode. Time to hit our phones. Hang tight. We'll take, uh, take your phone calls and we'll come back from our, our break. 855-660-4261. All right, welcome back to the Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben from reading from, uh, let's see, where is this from? Monkey? I don't know where this article is from here. Let's see. Oh, Nature Communications. Uh, this is off the website foodnavigator.com. Headline, Monkey Study Backs Caloric Restriction to Increase Lifespan and Slash Disease Risk. Where have you heard this, my friends? A 25-year study of diet and aging in monkeys has revealed a significant, that's a quote, significant reduction in mortality and age-related diseases among those with calorie-restricted diets. I love simple, easy-to-use 
health strategies. And one of the easiest, simplest, cheapest health strategies you could ever use is caloric restriction, restricting your uh, uh, daily intake of calories. I've said this so many times, you guys. Study after study after study, and yet another study, this one, a 25-year study, shows that caloric restriction means longevity. Caloric restriction means slashes in disease risk. This happens over and over and over again. We live in a culture that depends on us eating like pigs. We live in a culture that depends on us eating ridiculous amounts of calories. We live in a culture that depends on us overeating. It depends on us spending money on food. It depends on us spending money on lots of food. But when it comes to our health, the less we eat, the longer we live. As long as we're getting the right nutrients, that's called caloric restriction with adequate nutrition, the so-called CRAN diet, and you cannot possibly come up with a more effective health strategy, and you'll save money on top of that. And that's not talk, I'm not talking here about intermittent fasting, which is also very important and very helpful. Intermittent fasting actually turns on longevity genes. Intermittent fasting also turns on healing and growth and repair genetics. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking simply by restricting the amount of calories that we eat, being satisfied with less calories. And one of the easiest ways to do this, one of the easiest ways to incorporate caloric restriction into our lifestyle is to make sure you get on a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by Dr. Wallach and the one we talk about every day, the Longevity Nutritional Supplement Program. Get on the Healthy Start Pack. Try it. Check it out. Get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Just try one product. It'll cost you 50 to 55 bucks a month. One of the quickest, one of the, uh, quickest ways that you'll know that the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is having an effect is you're just not, you're not going to feel like eating as much. And the less you eat, the longer you live. The less you eat, the lower the load is on the body, the more resources the body will have to heal, to grow, to repair, to anti-age. And this is especially important if you're dealing with some kind of health challenge. All right, tomorrow we'll continue talking about lipofusion. We'll talk about vitamins and nutrients that you can take to help improve lipofusion drainage, to help lighten those uh, age spots that appear on the skin, and even more importantly, to prevent the accumulation of those cell wastes, the lipofusion wastes that can show up in the heart and in the brain and the various glands of the body, which can have a negative effect on the aging process. We'll talk about that tomorrow. On the bright side, our number today is 855-660-4261. Time to hit the phone. Let's uh, see. Take our first phone call of the day. Um, bum, 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 let's go to uh, let's go to Regina in Texas. What's going on? Welcome to the bright side, Regina. Hi, Ben. First of all, I want to tell you I love your style of your show of Thank education you. with uh, the depth. So don't give that up, please. Uh, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you, Regina. Not too much information. You don't think it's TMI? No, all right, no, good. no. Because you feel as though you really know what you're talking about. You can go into that depth, but you do it at a kindergarten level, so I can even get it. So I appreciate I, I really that. Appreciate it. That that's I very meaningful it. to me. Thank you so much, Regina. How can I help you today? Okay, I have a sister that uh, she was diagnosed in, nine, in 2004 um, with having anemia, like severe anemia. And um, we, we, we're a natural kind of family, you know, and so chlorophyll, we, we supplement with lots of things. Well, since 2004, it has not come up very much. And, you know, she is an overproducer. I mean, she does her work. She's not dragging around and all that stuff. But what I'm saying is um, she can't keep going on like this because all of her numbers are unbelievably off the chart low. Okay. And that, she recently, now, go ahead. Does, she, does she have anything else going on? Anemia is a secondary health issue. It's not a primary health issue. It shows up when other things are breaking down. So she must have some other stuff going on: digestive yeah. issues, blood sugar, overweight, liver problems, no, bone problems. She, she's not really overweight. I'm her older sister, and I was always like a mother to her. Um, okay. Yes, she's had digestion problems. She always could be, she could do these long burps, you know. Um, oh, okay. Her stomach would bloat. She, okay. um, yes, very much. Right, there so. you go. That, well, that's where we want to address. Now, how old is she, by the way? She's about 50. She's younger okay. than me. Okay, forget. well, now's the time. She, don't, she doesn't have time to waste here. We've got to get going. Uh, anemia is a, a condition where you have less, than, uh, less red blood cells than you need to have, or there's something wrong with your red blood cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen. That's their main role. Once you have lower red blood cells than you need, you have lower oxygen than you need, uh, at lower oxygen delivery to cells and, and to different tissues of the body, and that's a problem. Oxygen means energy, and, and one of the major problems with, uh, with anemia is, uh, first of all, you're going to feel fatigued. It's, it's great that she's using willpower to push past that that's actually can be a little bit counterproductive because if cells aren't getting what they what they need and she's pushing herself cells will become more stressed and ultimately cells will begin to die and that's where you really start to get into degenerative diseases so it's great that she's using her willpower 
Well, let's get her fixed up so she doesn't have yes. to use so much willpower. First of all, we got to focus on the digestive system. If she doesn't have, uh, if she's got a problem with the digestive system, she's not going to be able to absorb protein. She's not going to be able to absorb vitamins. She's not going to be able to absorb iron. And all of these things can lead to an, uh, an anemia state. So first and foremost, we got to focus on the digestive system. I would be uh, working with stomach acid. That's the first thing I would be doing. That means apple cider vinegar and something called bile salts. You've heard me talk about that, I'm sure. Uh, uh -huh. apple Apple cider vinegar can help acidify the stomach, and then the bile salts are going to be uh, uh, helpful for helping her process fats, and the uh, best way to get that is through her ultimate enzymes from longevity. Use the ultimate enzymes after meals, and it'll help her digest her food. It wouldn't hurt her to get on some liquid nutrients, especially liquid B vitamins. If she's not on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, have her get on it. If she is on it, have her up her dose. Probably throw in the ultimate daily as well. That'll get her her B vitamins. The B vitamins are very important for building blood cells. Uh, and by the way, when she's using her, uh, she wants to use her ultimate, uh, I'm sorry, her apple cider vinegar and her ultimate enzymes with meat and iron containing foods. If she's getting her iron from spinach or from vegetables, it's not going to be as effective as meat iron or as flesh iron. Uh, organ meats are probably her best source of iron, but if she's using vegetables to get her iron, have her grind the vegetables up, and that'll make it okay. easier for her to access the minerals. And have her mix the vegetables with some oil, and that'll help her access the nutrients out of the, the veggies as well. Uh, have her focus on any kind of foods that trigger digestive responses, negative digestive responses, and then eliminate those foods. Probiotics can be very helpful. Uh, use the, the Nightly Essence product. That's my favorite, of the, my favorite probiotic supplement. She may want to throw in some pain and creatine as well. And then in addition to the bile salts that she gets from the ultimate enzymes, maybe a good idea to throw in some extra bile salts too. Then as far as... Uh there's some other ideas for you here. Um, the B vitamins are going to be very important, but she could also, uh, she might also benefit from B12 shots. Sometimes B12 deficiencies can mask, uh, can uh, be a cause of anemia, a hidden cause of anemia. And if she has a problem with her stomach, she may not be absorbing her vitamin B12. You need to have stomach acid to absorb B12. So maybe she might want some vitamin B12 shots if she hasn't already done that. That could be something that'll be helpful. And then uh, also the fats are very important. Red blood cells, like all cells, depend on fats. The, the membrane on a red blood cell, like the membrane on all cells, is largely dependent on fats. That would be her ultimate EFAs. And have her take her ultimate EFAs and vitamin E, by the way, with lecithin and all her fat absorption aids. A couple more things. Hang tight. There's a couple more things that she can do uh, for anemia. Ready. Anybody out there for anemia. we got to take a break. I was, I'm going to tell you about oxygen when we come back from our break, too. So hang tight, uh, Regina. And then if you're on hold, we'll try to get to you as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the bright side. Got a full board, and I'll try to get to as many calls here as possible. Just want to remind you one last time: I'll be in uh, Centennial, Colorado, this evening, six to eight p.m. for Dr. Drew and Marcy, Nurse Marcy and Dr. Drew, talking longevity, talking nutritional supplements, talking health conditions, talking skin care, talking ingredients, uh, and then I'll be doing another talk uh, next Saturday or two Saturdays. Uh, from yes, from a couple days ago, April 19th, from 10 to 12, and that's at the Cold Bull Library, 5955 South Holly Street. Hope to see you there. Regina, I'm going to go really fast because i got a bunch of calls I want to get to, um, ma'am, and thanks so much for your kind words. I appreciate them. Uh, uh, focus, in addition to all the nutrients we just talked about and the digestive health, so, so important for blood. Uh, for the health of red blood cells, for anemia, uh, you're also, uh, and B12 shots, that's something I would think about too. Make sure you're practicing, or have your sister make sure she's practicing deep breathing techniques. Anemia is about oxygen. Uh, red blood cells carry oxygen in addition to all the things uh, that you need to do to help maintain red blood cell health, B vitamins, essential fatty acids, vitamin E, digestive health, vitamin B12, your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Uh, ultimate daily. Make sure she's practicing her deep breathing techniques, oxygenating correctly. I would get the uh, bio breathing app if she has an iPhone. Uh, there's another app called My Calm Beat and practice deep, slow, diaphragmatic breathing. It's so, so important. If she wants to do uh, something extra, she could do some yoga and that can also help with oxygenation. Anemia is basically an oxygen problem via defective red blood cells. Does that help you, Regina? Awesome. You're awesome. Now, she got some B12 from a vet store. What do you think about that? From a vet? Like a veterinarian? Yes. Is well, it's the fun? same B12. B12 is B12. B12? But, but if the injections would be a little bit... I, I would do the injections if I were her. 
That's just my okay. advice. Okay. And, and one more thing. It was suggested to do an, uh, an iron uh, infusion. Which would uh, be I, I'm not convinced. If she has a red blood cell problem, it's not an iron problem. It doesn't matter. And that's usually what the problem is. It's not iron. It may be an iron problem, but, but it usually has to do with the blood cells more than it has to do with iron. May I send you something by, you know how you tell some people, send me a, an email, and yeah. can I send you some of sure. the documents? Sure, then at kseo.com. Make sure you put on there that we talked on the radio, because I get uh, tons of emails. So and I, many. Oh, I, we love you. And you know, Jan you. and Leon and Dallas, uh, so many people you've been helping. Nancy True, we love you very much. Thank you thank so much, Eugene. God bless. Have a beautiful nice. day. Bye. Thanks for the kind words. I appreciate that. Okay, Susan in Texas. Back to Texas. What's going on? How you doing? Uh, I'm fine. I was wondering what I could possibly do. I have tinnitus, so okay. ringing in the ears, and it's, uh, it's driving miserable. me crazy. That is, that's got to be miserable. It's, it it's is awful. miserable. Oh, oh, man. It sounds it, like it, crickets, and sometimes it sounds like ringing. Oh, you poor thing. That is an awful thing. Uh, here's the deal. Tinnitus, like anemia, as I was talking to Regina earlier, is not a primary health condition. It's a secondary health condition. It follows other things. Nobody just has tinnitus, and you can't just attack the tinnitus. You've got to focus on the other health issues. And most especially when you have tinnitus, what you want to think about is inflammation in the head, inflammation in the nerves uh, that are uh, connected to where your your ears are connected into the brain, inflammation in that the, that whole well, center. Well, I've had four strokes. With well, that's all connected. My, that's all connected. It's all related. So here's the deal. We want to start, you never hear the saying, a longest journey begins with a single step. That's what we got to do. We got to start where we can start. And that means first the digestive system. That is by far and away the most important place where inflammatory factors get into the body. You got to have had some long-term digestive issues, Susan. You got to know that. I'm assuming you're probably in your 50s, right? 40s or 50s yep, at least, 50s. correct? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So you're in your 50s. That means that's long-standing digestive issues. That's probably your whole life. For you to have the tinnitus and four strokes at the age of, in your 50s, that's, you're relatively young. You're pretty young. You know, oh, if you do this. I've had heart attacks. And okay. All right. So, too. so, so I've, we, I've talked to you before, but this is just one thing I've. Okay, okay, well, let's focus on digestive health because as long as your digestive system is broken down, number one, toxins are going to get into the body and exacerbate that, exacerbate that inflammatory process. And then number two, you're not going to be able to absorb your nutrients. So let's get that digestive system straightened out first. Then we can start to work with some other things. First and foremost, fat absorption. Uh, anti-inflammatory, nerve anti-inflammatory nutrients are fatty, especially vitamin E and essential fatty acids. So let's get your fat metabolism uh, fixed up first and foremost. Get yourself on some apple cider vinegar right away. Go get the How ultimate. Do you do that? You, uh, you just go get yourself Bragg's organic apple cider vinegar at Whole Foods or a good health food store. I'm sure there's. Where in Texas are you? In Austin? And in Fort Worth. Okay, well, you got, I'm sure you got a Whole Foods or a health food We've store got there. Whole go, Foods or Sprouts or something. Go, something like that. Go get yourself a Bragg's apple cider vinegar. Do it after all your meals. Get the ultimate enzymes from Longevity. Do it after all your meals. Make sure you're taking lecithin granules after all fatty foods. Make sure you're eating eggs, which contain lecithin. Make sure you're focusing on digestive health. Get on the uh, Nightly Essence product, the probiotics. That'll help with fat absorption. We need you focusing on fat absorption. Remember, the longest journey begins with a single step. We don't want this to be overwhelming for you. So just step by step. First, fat absorption. That means lecithin, eggs, uh, apple cider vinegar after all your meals. You may want to get something called pancreatin. You may want to get something called bile, B-I-L-E, bile salts. All that will help you with fat absorption. And when you're taking all those supplement, all those uh, fat absorption aids, take vitamin E, 400 international units a day. Make sure you're using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine with all your meals. Make sure you get yourself on 20,000 international units a day of uh, vitamin A. You might want to throw in some something called cetyl myris Stoliate, and that's found in the CM cream, Longevity's, I'm sorry, CM pills, not the CM cream, but the CM pills, and take that with your fatty meals. That's a wonderful anti-inflammatory along with the vitamin E. That'll help suppress some of the inf uh, inflammation in the nerves. There's also minerals and uh, that are helpful for, uh, for tinnitus, and if you have a problem with fat absorption, you're not going to be able to absorb those minerals. Zinc, 50 milligrams a day is a must-have for all tinnitus patients. Simply by removing zinc from the diet, you can induce inflammation and cause, in, and cause tinnitus. So chances are pretty good you're deficient in zinc. Zinc is an all-around important mineral, 50 milligrams a day, and I like the zinc picolinate, P-I-C-O-L-I-N-A-T-E form. Kind of like uh, the chrom chrom 
Exactly like chrome. Yeah. Exactly, Susan. Just like that. Uh, and then uh, all the B vitamins are going to be helpful, but especially as I was talking about with Regina earlier, vitamin B12. You may want to consider some vitamin B12 shots. That'll help you with your cardiovascular health issues as well. If you have digestive problems, you, not, you tend not to absorb vitamin B12. Make sure you're sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and of course, the Healthy Star Pack is also very important. Now, I wish I'm we had on more the time. Digestive pack, so I get on, I'm on the right one. You're on the right one if you're getting the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. But throw in the the Nightly Essence product and go by your digestive symptoms. If you have gas or bloating or constipation or or, or any kind of digestive health problems or digestive symptoms, that's an indicator that you're having a problem with foods, with specific foods. Link those up to foods and then eliminate those foods. And let me tell you something, you guys and Susan. There's a major, major relationship between heart disease and fat metabolism. Major missed connection. No doctors are talking about it. It is so important. And the fact that you have the ringing in the ears really is a, a clear indicator that you have a fat metabolism problem. Longest journey begins with a single step. Focus on fat absorption, fat metabolism, fat digestion. Use all your fatty absorption nutrients and make sure you're getting your fatty vitamins and essential fatty acids and minerals as well. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. I'm going to try to get to a few more calls. If we can, Robert in Nevada, thanks for holding for so long. How can we help you? Okay, Ben, thanks for taking my call. I'll get right to it since we're out of time. Um, two of my peeps that I work with are suffering from uh, migraine headaches, okay. one of which is taking uh, Capomex and Vericet, which I assume are painkillers. They're not um, going to help with the migraines, though. They might help with the. About to say, they're not going to help with the migraines. Yeah. Migraines are a sign that the body's blood vessels are opening and closing inappropriately, specifically blood vessels in the head. Anybody That's deal with said, migraines, yeah. you guys? Migraine headaches mean circulatory problems in the head, in the uh, head area, in the cranium area. When the blood vessels open and close inappropriately, that can feel like pain, especially if they get really wide and they get really tight. That's basically what a migraine mm -hmm. headache is. The blood vessels okay. get really wide and they get really tight. Does that make sense? Okay. It okay. absolutely does. Okay. Then think you do? Whenever that happens, number one, think food. That's the, lar that's the most important reason why blood vessels open and close inappropriately, why well, they get real wide and then real tight. Food, allergies, that's the first thing I would think about. Again, focus on digestive health and then eliminate problem foods. There's also nutrients that you can take that can help control migraine headaches. Migraine headaches are a sign of uh, the, a body in distress. Giving the body nutrients, first of all, eliminating problem foods and correcting digestive problems, that's always step number one with migraine headaches. And then step number two, making sure that you're getting blood vessel controlling nutrients. That means the B vitamins and vitamin E, also vitamin C can be helpful as well. Use the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. I'd also be throwing in some extra B vitamins from your Ultimate Daily and then uh, 400 international units of vitamin E. There's also an interesting relationship between progesterone and estrogen and migraine headaches. Progesterone cream can sometimes help. 2% progesterone cream you can get over the counter. 10% progesterone cream is even better. You can have a pharmacist make that for you. Pregnenolone capsules or tablets, 100 milligrams a day, might also be helpful for balancing out excess estrogen, which may be involved in migraine headaches. Um, there's also an interesting serotonin connection to migraines. Serotonin and estrogen are both stress type of hormones. Uh, so controlling uh, serotonin levels is also, I, you know, I'll tell you about that tomorrow. We'll talk about that at the beginning of the program tomorrow, Robert, because we've got to move on. That's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to y'all later, folks. Bye for now.